Here is example three. In this case, my y's are not conveniently located on the left of the equal sign, and they are not mostly isolated. But I can still isolate the y's if I want to. And I'm going to continue with my habit of putting the y's on the left. So this first equation, I can move the 6y to the left of the equals, and it becomes negative 6y. If I move the x and the 8 to the right, they become negative x minus 8. Then I can divide both sides by negative 6. These cancel. y is equal to negative x minus 8 over negative 6. The second equation, if I move the 3y to the left, it becomes negative 3y. If I move the 2x to the right, it becomes negative 2x. The minus 4 was on the right, and it's still on the right. It's still there. Then if I divide both sides by negative 3, these cancel, and I have y equals negative 2x minus 4 over negative 3. There were a lot of steps of algebra to doing that, but I have succeeded in getting my y's isolated and to the left of the equal sign. Now I am going to compare what y is equal to in equation 1 with what y is equal to in equation 2. Negative x minus 8 over negative 6 is equal to negative 2x minus 4 over negative 3. Cross-multiplying, I get negative 3, negative x minus 8 equals negative 6, negative 2x minus 4. I have 3x plus 24 equals 12x plus 24. Moving all of the x's to the right and the numbers to the left, I have 24 minus 24 equals 12x minus 3x. 0 equals 9x. I'm not done. If I divide both sides by 9, these cancel, and x is equal to 0 over 9, which means x is equal to 0. Now I can plug x equals 0 into one of the original equations. I'll choose equation 1 again. x plus 8 equals 6y would give me 0 plus 8 equals 6y. 0 plus 8 is 8. And if I divide both sides by 6, I get y is equal to 8 over 6, which reduces to 4 thirds. x is equal to 0, and y is equal to 4 thirds is the answer to my question. But was this the best way to do it? Would there have been a faster way? Let's try doing example 3 again. But instead of isolating the y's, let's isolate the x's and see if we get the same answer. Isolating the x in equation 1 is as simple as moving this 8 to the other side. We get x equals 6y minus 8. And if I want to express this in the form of a fraction for cross multiplication, I put it over 1. In equation 2, if I divide both sides by 2, these 2's cancel. And I have x equals 3y minus 4 over 2. Let's compare these two equations by making what x is equal to in one of them equal to what x is equal to in the other. 6y minus 8 over 1 equals 3y minus 4 over 2. Cross multiplying, 2 times 6y minus 8 equals 1 times 3y minus 4. 12y minus 16 equals 3y minus 4. Moving the y's to the left and the numbers to the right, 12y minus 3y equals negative 4 plus 16. 9y is equal to 12. And dividing both sides by 9, I cancel, my y is isolated, it's equal to 12 over 9, which reduces to 4 thirds. Let's find our x by plugging y equals 4 thirds into one of the original equations. I'll use equation 1. x plus 8 is equal to 6 times 4 thirds. x plus 8 is equal to 24 thirds. 24 thirds is 8. So we have x plus 8 equals 8. 
Moving this 8 from the left to the right of the equals, we have x equals 8 minus 8, x equals 0. This is the same answer we got the first time we tried to do this example. But it went a little easier this time, because looking at the original equations, we can see that isolating the x's will be a little faster this time than isolating the y's. And this illustrates the fact that when you use comparison, you always have a choice of isolating the x's in both equations, or isolating the y's in both equations, and either way, you will get the same answer.